Hello there, Mr. Sutton bringing you this lesson on surface area and volume. In this one, we'll find surface area and lateral surface area for solids, and we'll also find volume. For the real life application, we're going to figure out how much material is needed for a soup can label. We're going to dive right into a surface area problem. In this one, they want us to find the surface area of this right rectangular prism. So in general, surface area, or total surface area, or SA for short, we're talking about the total area of all the sides. To find these, we need a formula for the surface area, and we need to plug into the various parameters of that formula. So write the formula, plug it in. Um, now, you might actually have a formula sheet that has the formula you, may, you need, or you might need to figure it out on your own if it's kind of an oddball shape. In this case, for a rectangular prism, the surface area is going to be 2 times the length times the width. That's taking basically the area of the base and multiplying it by 2, plus 2 times the height times the width. That's going to give us the right and left sides, plus 2 times the length times the height. Length times height, that's giving us the front and the back. Um, so going and plugging in the different parts here. This first piece, we've got 2 times 6 times 7, length and width. For the next one, we've got 2 times the height of 3, width of 7. For the next one, we've got 2 times length of 6, height of 3. And now let's just crunch the numbers here. So I've entered this whole string of stuff into my calculator. This one I definitely could do without a calculator. Um, but just to be on the safe side, if we're allowed to use one, we come up with 162. And we have to be careful here. This is a real life problem. So they're going to want units. In this case, for area, we're going to have squared units. Um, think about it this way, you know, you're doing 6 centimeters times 7 centimeters, you get centimeters times centimeters, centimeters squared. So centimeters squared is our units. For this next problem, a soup company designs a wedding-sized can with the following dimensions, shown over here. We want to know how much material is going to be needed to make the label. So as a hint here, they're saying find the lateral surface area of the cylinder. So in general, um, we need two concepts for this. First, let's talk about the base of one of these kind of shapes. When we say the base of a solid, we're talking about the top or the bottom of a solid when it is standing upright. Another way you could think about this, these are the two parallel sides here. Now, the reason I'm introducing the idea of a base is because lateral surface area, or LA for short, is defined as the area of the non-base sides. So in this case, we're looking for just this uh, circular kind of area here. We don't want these top and bottom parts. We just want the side here, the place basically where your soup can label would be. So there's a formula for lateral surface area as well as total surface area for a cylinder. Uh, pause the video and look up the lateral surface area formula. All right, so that should come out to 2 pi r times h. And if you think where this is coming from, 2 pi r is the circumference of one of these circular bases. So you're just taking that circumference and multiplying it by the height to get that outside there. Uh, let's plug in our different parts. We have a radius of 4 and a height of 12. And then using our calculator, we've got 2 times pi times 4 times 12. In case you were wondering, you can do second and then the exponent here to get the little pi piece here. Plugging that in, that's 301.6, still do, dealing with area, so that's 301.6 square inches. For this next problem, we're trying to find the surface area of this kind of ice cream cone shape. Um, now, there is no official formula for an ice cream cone on any formula sheet. So for weird situations like this, I like to call them mixed solids or compound surface area problems. On these, we need to find the surface areas of the individual solids that we already know, and then add those areas together. So we've got two areas to consider. We can break this up into a hemisphere, that's this top part. And also, we want the lateral surface area of a cone. And, and I said lateral surface area of a hemisphere um, because we don't want the circular base here. Uh, same thing with the cone. We don't want this circular base that they share. All right. So let's take a look at the hemisphere. There is no official formula for a hemisphere's surface area, but we can modify existing formulas. I mean, we know the surface area of a sphere, right? 
Take a minute to look that up if you don't have it. That'll be 4 pi r for just a regular sphere, 4 pi r squared, rather. Um, so we can divide that in half to get the surface area of a hemisphere. So that'll just be 2 pi r squared. Well, we know the radius. It's 6. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And at this point, um, I'm not ready to really multiply things out and get a decimal, so I'm just going to leave this in terms of pi until I figure out what's going on with this cone. So this will just be 2 times 36, or 72, times pi. And we'll come back to this number. All right, let's deal with the cone lateral area. Now this one has its own formula. If you look that up, you're going to see that that is pi times the radius times this weird little L symbol here. Uh, this is the slant height. This is the height not of the cone itself, but of basically going from the apex of the cone to its base. So this kind of diagonal height here. Now to figure this out, they didn't give it to us in the problem. Um, we can still, though, use some of the math that we learned earlier. This little cross section here, you might notice, is a right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the slant height. Your slant height is really just the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So pause the video and take a moment to find that slant height. All right, so hopefully you came up with the square root of 6 squared plus 8 squared, which is the square root of 36 plus 64, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. Or you could have just gotten this by 3, 4, 5 triangle, either way. So let's plug it in now. We've got 1 half times the radius of 6 times the slant height of 10, which comes out to 60 pi. But wait, there's more. We have to actually add these two areas together. So that's 72 pi and 60 pi. And you can actually add these together just like adding like terms. So that is 132 pi. And because that's not really satisfying, let's multiply 132 by pi to get a real answer here. On the calculator, 132 pi is going to come out to 414.7. And this will be centimeters squared. For this next example, in a sport called sphering, a person rolls down a hill inside an inflatable ball surrounded by another ball. We want to find, uh, basically given the diameter of the outer ball of 12 feet, we want to find the volume of the whole thing. So first off, this is very dangerous. Please do not do this ever. Uh, second, volume in general, we are talking about the space inside a solid. So pause the video and take a moment to look up the formula for the volume of a sphere and then plug in what you think you need to plug in to get that volume. All right, let's see how you handled that on your own. So the volume formula, that's 4 thirds pi r cubed this time around. And if you're ever wondering where this particular volume formula is coming from, um, it, it's actually derived by conceiving of an infinite number of triangles, or not triangles, pyramids being stuffed inside a sphere and finding the volume of all those. Um, but anyway, we need the radius. They didn't give us the radius. They gave us the diameter. Well, how do you get the radius if you have the diameter? The radius is half the diameter. So we actually have a radius of 6 feet. Plugging that in, so 4 thirds pi times 6 cubed. We're going to go ahead and use the calculator for this. So 4 over 3, you'll need a parenthesis for that. Pi times 6 cubed. We come up with 904.8. And volume is always going to be cubic units. So this is going to be cubic feet. And if you think about why that is, you're taking this radius, which is just feet, and taking three of them and multiplying them. So that would have to be feet times feet times feet is cubic feet. For our next trick here, we're given this pyramid. And we're actually told the volume is 80 cubic inches. This time, they want us to work backwards and find the value of this pyramid height, this x. So in these situations, we're actually going to start pretty much the same way we always would, by writing a formula that's pertinent to the problem. Now, since they're giving us the volume, we're going to write the volume formula for a pyramid, which is 1 third s squared h. And the different parts of this formula now, s, that's one of the sides of your square base. This is just for a square pyramid, by the way. And h, that's the actual height of your pyramid. 
So let's uh, pause the video and plug things in where you think they need to be plugged in and see if you can solve for x. All right, see how you did. So we know that volume is 80. S is going to be this 4 right here. So we have S squared, 4 squared. And then H is actually x. Solving now, we can multiply both sides by 3. That will give us 240 on the left. 4 squared is really 16, so 16x on the right. And then we just need 240 divided by 16. Doing that on my calculator, I got 15. Now that's going to be 15 inches because we're just talking about the height. So that's just a one-dimensional unit. For our final example, we're trying to find the volume of this crazy looking figure here. Just in terms of what you're seeing, this is a cube with a cone hollowed out of it. Uh, so this hollow space in here, we don't want to count that volume towards the volume of the whole shape. So pause the video and see if you can puzzle out how to get this volume. And you might want to take a look at our basic strategy when we needed to find the surface area of that ice cream cone earlier. All right, so what we're going to do is find the volume of the two individual solids involved here. And since we're hollowing out this cone, we're actually going to subtract that cone's volume. So we've got a cube and a cone. Let's do the cube first. That uh, volume formula is, is pretty straightforward. It's just S cubed. In fact, that might be why they call the third power the cube power, because it's got this cubic connection here. So our side for a cube is just going to be 6. So that's 6 cubed, which is 216. Let's look at the cone now. Volume of that, that's going to be 1 third pi r squared h. Yep. And then radius, they gave it to us. It's this 2 millimeters. Height is actually, well, they actually gave that to us too. It's 6. It's just the height of the cube itself. So multiplying all that together, I'm just going to do this on the calculator because they said nearest tenth, so I can round off. So I've got 1 third times pi times 2 squared times 6. Comes out to 25 point, I'm going to go out two decimals. Um, they wanted nearest tenth for the final answer. So I'm going to go one extra decimal out on all my intermediate steps. And now what did we need to do? We needed to subtract this cone's volume from the volume of the cube. So let's do 216 minus 25.13. And I'm going to just shamelessly do this on the calculator. That comes out to 190.9. They said nearest tenth, we'll do 0.9. And that's going to be cubic millimeters. So that's it for this one. Hopefully the high volume of examples will help you out on the homework. Till next time, this is Mr. Sutton signing off.